Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to our lavender bunting tutorial. Now in this tutorial we're going to be showing you how to make this lovely mini bunting and filling it with lavender which smells divine and is perfect to hang in a baby's room or around your home. Obviously you can choose the fabrics that you wish to use for the tutorial or if you want to use the same fabrics that we've got here then you can purchase a kit and the link to the kit will be in the description box below. So let's get started. Let's start by looking at the materials that you're going to need. If you wish to create the bunting the same as we have done with the four different gingham colourways, then you can purchase a kit and the link to the kit will be in the description box below. In the kit you will receive the correct amount of fabric for 12 pennants, three in each of the different colours. You'll receive some thread, some binding, some lavender to fill the bunting and a pattern. Now obviously you are welcome to do this in your own fabric and that's absolutely fine. I would recommend purchasing about a quarter of a metre if you wish to use four different colours. If you're planning on using three or two different colours you will obviously need more fabric in that colour. Some thread, we're working here with a Guterman 100% polyester thread. Some bias binding in a good colour for you. Now this bias binding is 2.5 metres in length and the width is 1 inch, 2.5 centimetres. If you wish to fill the bunting with lavender, obviously you'll need some of that. You're welcome to use something else to fill it with if you wish. You will need to either draw yourself out a pattern or you're welcome to download one of these from our website and again we'll put the link to that in the box below. If you wish to draw out one of these, the width of this is 4 inches, which is 10 centimetres and the length to the tip or the point is 4 inches, 10 centimetres again. I would recommend drawing it out on paper or card to make the process easier. Now in terms of the sort of supplies that you need or the equipment that you need, you obviously need a pair of scissors for cutting out your pennants. Maybe a little pair would be good for trimming threads. A spoon of some description and I would use that or something to help you fill your bunting with your lavender. Some pins for pinning everything together and some pens for marking things on and obviously a ruler if you plan to draw out your pennants. In terms of the, the pens to draw things on, chalk, pen that comes off with water or that comes off with air or even a pencil will do. Anything you've got to hand. So if you collect up the supplies that you need then we can get started. Position your template onto the wrong side of your fabric. Now if you're working with a print, especially a directional print, you may wish to put the, the pennants in the same direction all of the time so that the point is facing down so that they all look the same. Obviously with our gingham it doesn't matter too much. Now we're going to draw around the template because it's going to make the sewing of this all easier. Okay, so I'm going to be using a pen that comes off with water. You can use chalk or a pencil even. And we're literally just going to draw around the template here. Now make sure that you do leave space around the edges here because we are going to be adding on our seam allowances in a second. So... There you see, now we've drawn on, and this is going to be our stitching line around our template. Now we're going to look at adding a seam allowance onto this. Now we need to add on our seam allowances. We're going to be working with a quarter of an inch, which is five millimeters. And we're going to be using our ruler to measure out from our drawn line, a quarter of an inch, five millimeters, and we can draw a new line on the outside of that. Now we're doing this for accuracy because we want to make sure that when we sew our pennants that they all are the same size and all finish with a lovely little point. So this really helps with our accuracy. I will let you do this and we need to do this for two pieces for every pennant because obviously we're going to sew them together. So you need a front and a back for every one. So out of the colours that you're going to be doing we're going to be having three of each colour. A back and front of all of those means six of each colour. That's if you're working and want to do it in the gingham like we've done here. Obviously, if you're doing a different fabric, you're welcome to decide how many 
of your fabric you want to do, but do please remember that you will need to have one as a front and one as a back for each pennant and triangle. I'll let you draw out your pennants and join me back here. The next step is to cut out the pennants. Okay, and we're going to cut these out around the outside line that we used as our seam allowance line that we drew on. Okay, so cutting out along the outside line, which was a quarter of an inch, five millimeters from the inside line, which we drew around the template. As I said before, you need a front and a back for each pennant or triangle. So all we're going to do is take a nice pair of scissors and we're just going to cut all of those out. And I'll obviously let you do this for all of your triangles. And final line. All the way along here. And we're going to be left here with a front and a back. Okay. So now we've got two of our pennants ready to go. As I said before, this is the front and the back, so we're going to position the right sides together. I can get hold of it there, I can show you. There we go, right sides together. And we need to match them up, and this is the reason why we drew this line around here. So this is why we traced around the template for accuracy. You want to make sure, when you've created your bunting, that all of your lovely triangles are the same size. So this is where that comes in. We're going to start by matching up the points here. So we're going to check the point as we position it through and we're just going to double check it on the other side. And if we're not quite happy with it, all we need to do is lift up the one side and position it back on where it needs to be. And the same goes for the rest of this. So we're going to be positioning in the pin on the front, front side, double checking that it's coming through on the line on the other side, and then there we go, perfect. And you'll want a few pins down each side to make sure it's secure. And obviously this line is going to be handy when we sew as well, because rather than having to worry about our seam allowance line here, all we're going to be doing is sewing along the line that we drew. And again, that's going to really help the accuracy. And again on this side, double checking. So I'm going to let you do this for all of your pennants. I tend to always prepare things like this in batches because you have got 12 of them. You may have more if you're doing something else at home. You know, you always want to try and do as many of these things together because it will make the whole process quicker. Join me back here and we're gonna get sewing on the sewing machine. So now we're going to be sewing around our little triangle here. We're going to be sewing onto the blue line that you can see here. This is the line I drew around my template. So I don't need to worry about my seam allowance here. I'm just going to be following this line and that will really help with accuracy. Starting at this top edge here, we will be leaving the top open and we're going to be sewing down to the bottom corner, back up the other side and as I said, leave the top open because we need to use that to fill with lavender. I'm going to be taking the pins out as I go starting with my needle down, foot down, and I'm going backwards and forwards a couple of stitches to start, or obviously you can use a lock stitch if your machine has one. Now I'm just going to be sewing this in a standard stitch with the length of 2 or 2.5 millimeters will be fine, and this is just a normal straight stitch. Now, as I near my corner here, obviously I will need to take my pin out as I get close to it, I'm going to try and finish with the needle down. Now I've got probably one more stitch to do, so I'm just going to walk that with the hand wheel on the side of the machine, maybe another one, to make sure I'm really precise with, with where I finish the corner. My needle is down, I'm going to lift my foot, and I'm going to turn my fabric, so that then I can start stitching on the line back up to the other side. And that will make sure that you've got a really nice and accurate corner there. Now we're sewing all the way back up the other side and we'll obviously do a lock stitch or backwards and forwards when we get up here. 
I'll let you complete that for all of your little pieces and then we can look at trimming and filling with lavender. So once you've sewn around the pennant, we're going to trim them down. Obviously trim your threads first, keep on top of those, and then we're going to cut down our seam allowance using a sharp pair of little scissors to one eighth or three millimetres. And we're going to do that all the way around our little pennant. When we get to the bottom, we're obviously going to cut off our little corner at the bottom or the point so that we don't have too much bulk to turn back through. So we're just going to cut this off like so. And then we're going to complete the same one eighth all the way up the other side. Now if you can complete this for all of your little triangles, then join me back here. We, I will show you how to turn them around and how to fill them with lavender. Now it's time to turn around all of your pennants to the right side and poke out the little points that, for the corners at the bottom of them. You can use a little wooden dowel or even the tip of a pencil to do this. Now we're going to give them a quick press to make sure that they're going to sit nice and flat. Next we're going to fill them with lavender. Now we're going to fill the little pennants with lavender. Obviously, if you haven't got lavender, you're welcome to use something else that will smell nice in the little triangles. So I would open up the triangle, almost like an ice cream cone, and then use a spoon to be able to feed in the lavender. And obviously you can use as much as you need per um, triangle. Um, you don't need too much, I'd probably say like a teaspoon sized amount, um, but it's just enough to make it smell nice and give a nice scent to the room. So complete that for all of the triangles, then we're going to go back to the sewing machine because we're going to baste up the top edge to stop the lavender from spilling out before we then attach it to the bias binding. Now to seal the lavender inside this lovely little triangle, we just need to complete a little basting stitch along this top edge. Now we're going to do this a quarter of an inch, five millimetres in from the edge here and I know where that is by a guide on my foot and also a little mark on the plate here. Okay, so we're going to complete a straight stitch, put the foot and the needle in to the fabric but the straight stitch length for a basting stitch is going to be four millimetres so I'm going to increase the length on my machine to four millimetres. We're going to go backwards and forwards and all the way along this area until you get to the other end and backwards and forwards again lift the needle and the foot and we can cut the thread on the side and there we have it So the next step is to lay out all of the pennants on a table in front of you and decide on the order in which you wish them to lie. Now obviously you can copy the order that we've done here if you're working with our little gingham lavender bunting kit or you can make up your own order. If you're using your own fabric obviously you'll need to decide on the order that you wish to use. Now we're working with 12 pennants but obviously if you are working with more than 12 you may find that you need to buy more than one length of bias binding. This is 2.5 meters in length that we've got here. Now once you've laid out all of your pennants we need to find the halfway point so whether that be the halfway point of one of the triangles or in between two of the triangles. The halfway of all of our 12 is between this blue and green one here. Now we also need to find the halfway point of our bias binding and we've just folded that in half to find that and I put a little pin on the fold as I know that is my halfway point. Now this is important because you want to make sure that the bunting sits perfectly central in the bias and that we've got enough left over on either side for us to be able to tie it onto something. So we're now going to position the bunting into the bias. We'll start with our blue gingham here and the edge of the blue gingham is just going to sit against that pin. Okay now you want about the edge of the bunting here to be about halfway of the binding so that you can wrap it over and they should be finishing at about the same point either side. 
Now we can take that pin out and use that to pin this together. I would recommend pinning about one eighth, three millimeters from the edge so that it's all pinned securely. And you will need quite a few pins. Now this is probably the most fiddliest part of the project. So take your time and make sure that you get it right. But just work your way along each of the pennants, making sure that it's even on either side. So when we're pinning on this side, we should be picking it up. It's a little bit too much on the back, so we'll just have a little fiddle until we're happy with it. That looks a bit better, same with this one. So the pin should be going in about one eighth, three millimeters from the edge on both sides. Okay, next we need to join in the other one that was the other side of the middle, the green one. And we're going to position these, if I just take that out so you can see, the top of them is going to be touching. So the top of the green and the top of the blue triangle will be touching as we wrap our bias around. And again, this is a little bit fiddly, using pins to secure it all the time. Now you will find that obviously here, they aren't touching because they're touching at the top and that's not a problem. Making sure that my edge here, we want to make sure that your front edge always covers the back edge of the bias. We don't want to see the back of the bias at any point. So make sure that the front is always covering it and they're either the same distance or if anything, the front is a little bit further down. So we'll continue then with our green one. And I want you to complete this all the way along all of the triangles. And as I said, you will need more pins than maybe you do for an everyday project. But just make sure that it's all really nice and secure. I'm going to let you do this for all of your triangles and then I'll show you what we do for the ends of the bias. So once you've pinned to the end of the last pennant, you're then going to work your way along the rest of the bias binding. And all you need to do here is fold the bias in half and insert a pin 1 8 three millimeters from the edge. As I mentioned before, if anything, you want to make sure that the front side overlaps the back by a little bit so that you don't see the back side from the front or just make sure that they're sitting flush together, whichever you find easier. So then we're getting to the end of our bias. What do we do here? We're going to turn under about three eighths or one centimeter and then we're going to fold this in half. This is a little bit fiddly here. We really want to make sure that any of these sort of raw edges get tucked inside. So you will need to sort of use your, your fingers and maybe a pen to really tuck those all inside. So that when you pin along the bottom, it's all very neat. And when we sew along the bottom, it's all very neat. One last pin in here. And then we're going to move on to the sewing machine so that we can sew this. Now, what are we aiming for? Well, this is one that we finished previously. And this, as you can see here, has got stitching about one eighth away, three millimeters away from the edge of the bias. It's what I would call edge stitching. And it looks really, really neat. So let's go to the machine and let's try and have a go. So now we're going to start by sewing all of the way down our bias tape. We're gonna start right at the top edge here. Okay, now I've put my pins in in the right way so that I can take the head of the pin is facing towards me Which will allow me to take them out very easily Now you're going to position this in and place our foot down now I've got a little guide on my foot that will allow me to sew about one eighth three millimeters away from the edge So hopefully you can line that up on your machine too Now we're going to start as always by holding on to our threads and turning the wheel on our machine the hand wheel to put the needle into the bias. Now we're going to be sewing this with a normal stitch and a stitch length of 2.5 millimeters. We're going to start by going backwards and forwards, or as using a lock stitch if you've got one. You may find that your fabric does wiggle a little bit at the start because you've only got a tiny bit for the machine to take, so it can be a little bit difficult to start with and you may need to sort of rejig your foot to make sure you're sewing in the right place. Now we're going to be taking out the pins as we go, and once you get started, it will be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing one eighth, three millimeters away from the edge of my bias. And this is the edge where the two edges are joining, not the folded edge. 
Okay. And obviously remember to take your pins out. Now you'll have to do this for the two long areas leading up to the bunting. Obviously you may have a shorter length than I do if you have been putting your own bunting together rather than following our kit for the lavender bunting. Now I'm nearing one of my pennants now. So I'm going to make sure that my pins stay in and keep it in position until I get there. Here we go. So what I'm using, as I take my pins out, I'm using my finger here to really push down and hold on to the bias and keep the pendant in the, pendant in the way that it should be. Okay, now as I'm going along here with my triangle, you can see that I'm still using the same edge of the bias binding in line with the little nook on my foot. And that makes sure that I'm still sewing the same distance away on my bias. That's one eighth of an inch, three millimeters away from this little edge here, the bottom edge of the bias. Now I just recommend that you really take your pins out only when you get close to them because we do want to make sure that these all stay nicely together. And I'm holding the two here as I move along. Now I'm going to let you do that for the whole length of your bias binding. And there you have it, some beautiful lavender filled bunting. Okay.